Hi. Rough week. It is now in Dallas, the old my corona. Yeah, my last my last volunteer thing that I do just got suspended. So yeah. We've lost several clients this week. Mm -hmm. Like corporate clients. Mm -hmm. So that's a trying to and it's like, you know, we're just putting things on hold. Mm -hmm. Right, suspending any uh, outside activity, and, and to be fair, a lot of, I mean, I think it's wise, it just hurts, right, and so I'm in trying to figure, I'm in, I'm in the figure outable mode, I've got to figure all this out, um, <coughs> but I wanted to touch, I, I wanted to, my goal today was to, because we're about to shift into spring liver energy cycle and everything, so my goal today was to and we've been working on relationship, right? The different mother-daughter, grandmother, granddaughter kind of relationships. And so what I wanted to try and do was put this together with what we've worked on um, so far. So spleen, kidney, Uh, well, hang on. No, no, don't do that. <laughs> I failed. Okay. Stop it. Yeah. Lungs. <laughs> and then kidneys. That fall, right before fall, Indian summer kind of time, is spleen energy. So this is like mid-August to September, mid-September, right before the fall. Lungs fall, right, and then kidneys winter. So we've been, we've been looking at that this way. Spleen, um, let's look at the uh, congenital emotions. The congenital emotion, trust, lungs, it has to do with Healthy boundaries, really. And kidneys. Um, wow. Why Wisdom. Am I? Wisdom. Thank you, dear. <laughs> yeah, I'm. I'm probably off my game a little bit today. The acquired emotion, the acquired energy that we're looking at, the one that we get from our surroundings and everything is here we, we look at worry, here we look at grief, and then with kidneys we look at fear. And of course none of that is going on right now in the world around us. Uh, we don't have any boundary issues, we don't have any fear, we don't have any worry, we don't have any grief, right? None of that's going on, right? Um, to me, so when we look at these relationships like this, if we look at them from the relate from the chart, we've got heart, spleen, lungs, kidneys, liver, right, and this the creation cycle this way. So Starting with the spleen, if we have trust, if I know where I am, if I'm grounded and I have trust, then I know how to maintain healthy boundaries for myself. So I can, I can speak my truth, I can create that space where this is my space, that's your space, and we're good. Okay, follow me? With that, there's a wisdom that comes with that, a sense of knowing. I know where I end and other begins, and that creates a space where I can feel safe, and then with the liver, we get into compassion. So let's, we're leaving the liver out for the moment. We're going to add that in. Ever since I've been told not to touch my face, I can't stop touching my face. Um, <clears throat> if we get into worry, anxiety, it starts to challenge our boundaries. 
let's look at it from what's going on in the world right now with the coronavirus and how people have been reacting to it. All right, so there's, with the heart energy, let's look at just, because it's starting, in some cases, it's starting with heart. In that heart, the congenital is tranquility or order, let's just say order. And then the opposite of that for us is chaos. And so we're experiencing confusion, disorientation, chaos. This virus shows up, you know, eight weeks ago and it's wreaking havoc across China or in an area and it's growing, now it's spreading around the world. There's a lot more disinformation than there is information or has been. Let's look at, you know, just looking at eight weeks ago. There's a lot more disinformation than information. There's a lot more confusing things than there are informative things. There's also sensationalism that's pushing into the kidneys, into fear, right? And that's going to be disruptive to the heart. If you think about the controlling cycle, looking at the relationship, if I have fear, it's going to breed the disorder and the chaos that my heart pushes into anxiety. Does that make sense? It's going to be exacerbated if I don't trust. So I can't trust the media sources. I don't care what side of the aisle or whatever you are. All of them are lying. All of them are trying to scare you uh, in, a, in a significant way. They're not informed, but they, yet they're willing to be the informants. Because, you know, if the medical professionals are, don't know, then how can the talking heads know? But they're not afraid to talk about it. Right? And they're not afraid to say, it's all good, it's just a flu, don't worry about it, or, oh my God, the end is, dying. The end is near. You know, it's like we hear it all. So when that comes in, it creates distrust, which fuels fear, and then really fuels chaos, anxiety, right? Does that make sense? So we're looking at a, 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 um, a controlling cycle. So you have distrust, which is very uprooting, right? That feeds into fear, which then feeds into anxiety. Of course, nobody in here besides me feels that way, right? The biggest challenge here is uncertainty. Uh, to me, and, and it, you know, this is not a dictation here. I want to hear from you guys as to how you're feeling about this. But to me, the biggest challenge that we face with all of this, and this creates this, is the uncertainty. That's huge, right? I agree. And I was framing it as fear of the unknown, kind of a big broad thing. And then it was just overwhelming, you know, on the news last night. Nora O'Donnell, who's usually is a calm, reasonably calm voice of reason, breaking news, America shut down. And I thought, my country shut down. <laughs> That's huge, you know. And then I, okay, let's just break that down. Like, what exactly are you afraid of? And then kind of work through the specific fears as opposed to just of this giant thing out there. Yeah, I love Nora. Uh -huh. I am sick of hearing breaking news. Breaking news, she says it every it's, night. And, and that, I don't think that that's her. Yeah. It's, I think that that's, that's the script. That's how they sell it. Yeah. That's how they sell it. And yeah. so, you know, if you, at, at the airports, you see the red stream running down at the bottom of the banner and everything is it's breaking like, news, everything right? Is breaking news, yeah. And so, to me, it becomes this boy who cried wolf kind of mindset where we don't even we just kind of get numb to it yeah I think it has a reverse effect but it, it's what they're trying to do and I'm not saying this about one media outlet over another but what is important to 
television. Ratings. Ratings. Advertising money. money. It's all funny. And ratings money. feed into advertising money. Yeah. And that money keeps that flow going. That's it doesn't matter whether they're right wing, left wing, top wing, under wing, that's delta wing, wing whatever. I don't want to get into that curse box. I don't know if it's the gift of fear. Probably. I don't remember. It's, it's been a long on it. Yeah, yeah but no. The, so with that, what happens is, we, you know, psychologically, we know that we are more motivated by fear than pretty much anything else. We'll do anything to avoid fear. And so they're using that to get ratings, get eyeballs on the screen. If there's more coming in just a minute, you know, here's a lead in and then commercials and then, yeah. Oh, and by the way, okay, we've given you the big kaboom here. Now, well, but there's one, there's more. There's another thing going on the East Coast. There's some, there's fires in Australia. There's this, there's that. And it's not that these things aren't bad, that they're, they're not devastating to, you know, I'm not trying to minimize the impact of, you know, this virus outbreak and such, but I'm also trying to prevent maximization of it. There's, we need to have clear, concise information so that the uncertainty is settled, right? So good information will start to create trust, start to eliminate the chaos with, basically it starts to create order. So there, we're supporting trust, we're supporting a sense of order, we're reducing fear, so we're creating wisdom by giving, giving ourselves good information from reliable sources. And believe me, I've been looking. I, I've been looking for good information. Right now, the, the, the one that I'll post with this video and then I'll send it out via email is Harvard Medical School put out, they've got a, a one page site that gives good information about the coronavirus. There's nothing sensational there. There's some podcasts where you can listen to for discussion, but just the Q&A on that site is very good because it's looking at the most recent statistics, and I don't remember the statistics right off the top of my head, but do you remember the SARS outbreak? Mm -hmm. If I remember correctly, it was around 13% mortality rate. The MERS outbreak prior to that was around 30% mortality rate they're predicting the coronavirus based on the information that they're gathering and it's still ongoing to be about a 1% mortality rate. Now that's not a small number. The flu is about 0.6. The typical annual flu is about 0.6. So it's not as, it's still not good, but it's not as horrible as things we've already been through. So getting good information can start to settle, create trust, begin to create order. So through the trust, we really we're controlling from here. When we get this good information, we're building wisdom. From wisdom, we are starting to create order. From order, we're starting to build trust. Do you see how that relationship works? It can go any direction. For me, what I did before I got, so I'll play with it from, from the way I've, I've been approaching it this week. First, I run on a mantra of trust, allow, and be thankful. I'll just say gratitude. And that's my mantra. It's been my mantra for a long time. Trust that everything is happening as it needs to for my highest good, even if I'm getting a flat tire. Maybe that's preventing me from having an accident at the next intersection. I don't know. But I'm trusting that even though this sucks and it's raining and i got to change a tire, 
it's happening for my highest good. If nothing else, I get practice with all my tire tools. Um, so I trust. I allow things to unfold in their own time. I'm not trying to rush through, and I'm not trying to hide. I'm allowing things to unfold in their own time. We've gotten a lot of difficult information from the business perspective this week. Like I said, we've lost several major clients to the uncertainty of this outbreak. And we don't know when or if we'll get them back. Well, that's a significant threat to my ability to keep the lights on here, my ability to take care of my family. On top of that, you know, the university where our son goes in Atlanta, Emory, which is next to the CDC, basically told us yesterday, um, we're clearing all the dorms out and your son has to, your child has to be out of the dorms by March 22nd. Yeah. That's like, it's his senior year, I feel really bad for him in that because, you know, it's impacting they're going to go online. I don't know what all they're going to do, but he's like, you don't, it's like, you don't have to go home, but you can't stay here. Like I said that last week under totally different context. Um, <laughs> so these are all things that are out of my control, among others. So my work this so far has been, and a lot of it hit yesterday, so I was kind of in a loop yesterday, but a lot of, I've been working to build that trust. I trust that no matter what happens on the other side of this, I'll be okay. And that's not Pollyanna. I, I'm looking at how can I mitigate, how can I, you know, what are my options? But I'm not doing it from a place of panic. Does that make sense? I'm working hard to stay grounded on the, on the, the big picture is I'll be okay. How I'm going to be okay, I'm not sure yet. But I'm trusting that I'll be okay. That helps keep me anchored, even though things are loose and uncertain and uprooted. So that's my approach, is creating that space of trust that I'll be okay. We will be okay. Allowing things to unfold in their own time gives me that opportunity to take a breath, not feel like I'm rushing, making decisions that are maybe too hasty. I'm not clear on them yet. So I don't know what this means, right? Do I approach the landlord about mitigating rent for a little while until we get things squared away? I don't know yet. I, gotta, you know, I need time to kind of allow things to settle so that I can see more clearly. Does that make sense? So I'm not hitting the ground, foot on the floor, got to go, got to go, got to go. I'm allowing things to kind of unfold slowly. I'm grounding myself. I'm observing. I'm looking to see what needs to shift and move, right? And then this is the hard part, the gratitude, feeling grateful for every step along the way. What's to be grateful about a, a global pandemic? I do try to find gratitude about that thing or gratitude in the situation. Right. I mean, to me, there are two different things. Like, are you grateful for the pandemic, or do you find places to be great? I find, I can't, I'm not, I'm not necessarily grateful for the pandemic, but I can find places within what's going on to be grateful for things. So yes. I was curious if you were, if you're grateful for the big bad thing as well. As the, does that make sense? Yes, it does. And, and that's a great question, because it's like, well, what, what are you gonna be grateful for? Well, I'm grateful that I have some hot tea. You know, but that's mm -hmm. kind of, you know, minimizing. Um, the, I look for, in the pandemic, what, what can we look at within that? One, it's bringing people to the table to talk to each other outside of borders, right? So we're, the borders are down right now. All over the world, the borders are down. Medical communities are talking to each other and trying to get a handle on this and all of that. And that's a good thing. That's a good thing for moving forward with society in general. So while the, the reason that it's happening is bad, it's, a, it's actually a good thing that this is bringing, and I was talking to, to, at, the, at the clinic this morning, and it's like one of the things that's happening right now is the underbelly 
the ugly stuff in society is coming to the surface. And in that, it gives us a chance to look at it and decide what we want to keep and what we want to get rid of. If we kept it down in the bottom, it would always be there like a sepsis. Does that make sense? So I would never wish a pandemic on the world and I'm not grateful that it's here, but what can we pull from it that will strengthen society in general? For me, all I can do is what I'm doing here at the center, trying to help use this as an opportunity to give people better tools to manage this kind of thing. Practice my own tools. You know, when I'm bouncing this stuff off of you guys, I'm just as vulnerable as anybody in here. So it's a matter of what do we do with this? And how can we become stronger for having experienced it? Jean, do you have anything to add with that? Or a question? Mm, well, I had a I had a big question and I don't I don't know if I want to open the big box yet, but mm -hmm. what now what I'm curious. Yeah, <laughs> what do you, what do, you, what do I do if I'm if that's kind of where I'm at is is trying to trust, allow, and be grateful, but, and, 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 you know, I'm not great at it, but I can keep coming back to that, mm -hmm. but I live with somebody that's not in that place yet at all. Right. And so, so I guess my question is, what are, what are the, what are the main things I can do to keep from constantly being, I can't, I can't bring myself to believe that he's trying to uproot me, but it it feels like that it feels like the calmer I get, the more the more hey look at this um, that that he gets. So well, if he's so, what you're talking about is boundary challenges, mm -hmm. right? Where he's expanding into your space mm -hmm. and it's feeling overwhelming. Mm -hmm. Is that fair? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. So with that, oh, my face keeps itching. <laughs> with that, um, what can you do to not contradict or confront, but to create a space? That, that, to me, there's two things that you can do there. One is hold your boundary, right? And then if we need to talk about what that looks like, then that's something we can talk about. Mm -hmm. But the other thing is if he's... If, you know, is his information solid or sensationalist? Because if it's sensationalist, maybe bringing solid information in to the conversation from sources, you know, like, like I'll send out the Harvard Medical School one. That's been the most clean, concise one that I've seen. I've seen a lot of different ones. I've watched some podcasts and, and stuff to try and get a handle on what I'm really looking at. Because uh, so much of the population that we work with, like in assisted living and memory care, it's like, it's lethal to them for the most part. The highest lethality is um, 80, 80 years and up. It's like 15% mortality rate for 80 years and up. So I have to be really mindful about what we, what we do with those communities. Um, but the question would be, is the information he's giving you valid, solid? you know, reputable, or is it hearsay, um, talking heads trying to stir the pot, you know, that kind of thing. And maybe if you're coming from a grounded place, it could help him ground. It's not your responsibility to ground him, but you know, like with Fane, for example, she's vibrating at a different level than I am with this. Uh, there was another incident uh, a couple of years ago where she was really stressed about something and I was like, stop looking at that. It's, 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 not, it's not the whole story. Um, Isn't there a place also for acknowledging where that person is and under... Like, yes. I mean, you know, kind of sometimes that can even relieve it. Like, I think sometimes if we get super calm, the other person's like, well, you don't understand. You don't understand. This is bad. This is bad. Yes. And if you can kind of at least say, I get it, I, wonder, I don't know how that fits into. 
Well, doesn't that, that come in with, well, yeah, you know, here's the information that I found, uh -huh. and I, I think we're going to be okay. I mean, that's not dismissing them, because I hear what you're saying is that, you know, that you don't want to be dismissive. Right. Uh, or minim minimizing. Right. You want to be. Really afraid. Right. And if, and I mean, I don't know where he's coming from, but if there's a, if there's a fear component to it, then, you know, wisdom. Why? Yeah, and it, well, it, I, I can, I can give you more details later at another time, but it's, sure. it's not, it's not the virus itself that that information that's that's triggering him, and but it, it definitely is fear. But it's like he's, it's the stuff, the stuff that he's when he listens to just the news, most of the stuff that he's reporting to me sounds factual and reasonable, but when he, he's he spends a lot of his day listening to the talking heads and he's got his he's got his own heroes and his own villains in his mind and it's like that are he wants his heroes to be in charge and, and he's afraid every time the villains say something that uh, he's he's uh, it's like he's afraid of all this stuff to the side politically that's going on mm -hmm. and that the whole the whole country is going to fall apart because the villains are going to take charge and his his heroes aren't going to be able to get it. it's it's more complicated than that, but it, it's no that no no. Mess. Well, I mean, it is more it's complicated than that, but it's just as simple as it's, that. It's it's an us and them mindset, which is pervy. You know, right now, fifty percent of the country is us, and the other fifty percent is right. them. And right. and I don't know what to do with that. I'm, I I can acknowledge and say I, I understand you're afraid of that. This is you know I've heard you've expressed this this fear of this. Thing happening before, and I, I'm sympathetic to your being afraid, but I don't know how to, at the same time, say I need a break from all this fear. I, I mean, I I'm not going to own it for myself. I, I I've spent too much of my That's life overcoming good. fear, and I'm not going to live in fear today. That's good. And it, and if it has to be that, there's I've got friends that basically I have I have asked them to leave politics out of our conversations because we're on other sides of the fence on things and we don't see things the same way because of that hero and villain's mindset or us and them and with that it's like you know what I love you this is not a conversation that we can have and that's it you know and, and especially with a spouse that can be really difficult but We can talk offline a little more, more detailed, and, and maybe offer some different ideas that I can do here. Um, but it is difficult, and um, there's no, you know, you hear me say all the time, it depends. There's no one answer because the, the human dynamic is very unique to each of us. The, <laughs> the, the way I see that is both parties have been in that position. They both run this country from that position. This country is still alive. And yes, he could say one person, in, one wrong person in there can destroy this whole country. That's as realistic as saying, I could go get in a car accident and die today. Right. So, I mean, I don't really look at it that way. I mean, everybody. Well, yeah, to, me it does, right to me, it does come down to a choice of how are you going to look at it, and I can't make that choice for somebody else. But right. how do I, how do I keep it's? I don't know. I was I. It's almost from my earliest memories. I when I was a very small child, I was afraid of everything that moved or made noise, and I've, I've worked my whole life to live in a place where I'm less afraid, of things and it's it, it feels like a, a, a constant it, it's like a constant workout of, of mental and emotional muscles to keep rejecting all of that stuff right it is and you know what you're talking about when, when we look at it you know if there's a lot of fear in the kidneys and it's impacting your boundaries right that's a rebellious cycle it's pushing back against the flow the flow is continuous this way, so healthy boundaries create a space for wisdom to grow, and then that nourishes compassion, and that nourishes order and tranquility, and that nourishes uh, trust, 
right? So it creates that flow. If I've got fear pushing in because of uncertainty or because of somebody else trying to impose it on me, they're imposing on my boundaries, creating instability, that's uprooting me, creating a lack of trust, and then that starts to create the chaos, right? which is what you're describing, so it's a rebellious cycle. Mm -hmm. Sometimes, you know, ideally, and, and, it, and it could be just temporary, but at times we have to be able to set harder, you know, I don't like to put up walls. Walls are imper impenetrable, where you, you know, say, that's it, I'm done with you, you're dead to me, right? That's not what I'm proposing, but sometimes the boundaries need to be more firm, mm -hmm. right? Like what I said, with, you know, I've got a couple of friends that way, where it's like, I love you, we can talk about family, we can talk about hockey, we can talk about, you know, superfluous stuff, but this topic, stop talking to me about because we're clearly not on the same page and all it's doing is irritating you and I'm not changing. Right? Not that I can't be open to other ideas, but what you're proposing to me is not on my agenda. I have balls towards the media. Right. Information is important. If we don't, so, you know, the, if we don't have information, we have uncertainty. Yeah, but, but you can take the, the same, they're all saying the same information there's a core of information that's out there, and then there's the sensationalized. If you take that core of information that's out there, that's about all we can do ourselves. Like, wash your hands, keep your hands off your face, you know, things like that. If we all abided by that, um, I mean, I can't go save the world, but I can start here and take care of myself. And I think that, to me, that alleviates a lot of fear because and trust in a higher being, trust in God, that it's going to work out the way it's supposed to work out. Um, but yeah, it's like when you get that sensationalism. I mean, Dave Ramsey had a quote back when the recession was happening. And he said, you can choose to, to participate or not. <laughs> and I choose not to participate in the fear of this. It's, you know. Right. I mean, and it comes down to planning and having wisdom and grounding yourself and well building wisdom and, you know because yeah. this is this is new to all of us you know and, and, <laughs> i mean we've got people out there and I, and I haven't read an article on this in the past couple of days but there was people that were concerned they could get the virus from corona beer uh, <laughs> and chinese yeah. restaurants and chinese, chinese restaurants, restaurants yeah. <laughs> yeah and so with that I don't know if this is true. A friend of mine told me this, and I don't know if it's true, but it's it's hilarious if it is. And if it's not, Corona just got a free plug for advertising. Um, I heard that Corona Beer um, contacted the CDC and said, we'll give you $50 million if you rename it Bud Light Virus. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, was it Ted Cruz? I saw a thing yesterday with him, and he tweeted that one of his friends, because he's doing self-isolation right now, mm. self-confinement, and he had tweeted a, a picture, uh, one of his friends sent him a gift basket of Corona beer. He said, hope this is the only Corona you see. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, um, when you drink enough of that, you don't care if you have the virus. That's <laughs> true. So, where are we with this? When, you know, when we, last week we were talking about relationships and, and how these things relate to each other and whether there's a flow, a natural flow, like the flow, uh, creation cycle kind of a flow, or if there's a controlling cycle going on, a rebellious cycle where it's pushing back, right? It's going against the flow, if you will. Um, I don't expect you to memorize this stuff. I just want you to, to be able to kind of understand from a medical Qigong perspective, what we're looking to do is, is look, where am I resisting? Where is there resistance? It could be outside ourselves, or it could be within ourselves. Because there's, there's um, this, in essence, when you're looking at the, the creation cycle here, a natural flow, and even the controlling cycle is a natural flow. This is the way we work with the system. With that, I cannot keep my hands off my face. No. With that, it's psychological to me. It's like, ah, there's so much scratch my face. But with the controlling cycle, there's a natural flow, a natural order. 
when we're in this space, we know it. it, it feels good. We feel good, we're moving through life, things are going well. When things start to get disrupted, like this major disruption that we're dealing with, things start to go sideways. If we observe it through this five element practice, we can start you know, looking at trust versus worry, boundaries versus grief, wisdom versus fear, order versus chaos, and, and you know, we'll just put liver up here too. And they're not in order at this point, but compassion versus anger. And this is very simplistic. There's a lot more to these relationships Right? But this is an introductory class, and, there, and this is, you know, this is, that's why I call it 101, because we're just exploring the surface. If you want to go deeper, we can go deeper, but it'll be different. Um, but with that, looking at the seesaw, if you will, if things are flowing well, then we, we, we can move through life. Yeah, we may have disruptions and things, but when things, but we can move through them with simple adjustments. When something upheaval like this comes in, we have to work harder. We have to really work to maintain that ground for ourselves. To me, and, and that's why we, you know, the first principle we teach here at the center is grounding. Mental, emotional, physical grounding. Because without that sense of ground, that sense of connection, I can't build trust. I can't establish boundaries. I can't create a space where I even feel safe building wisdom. Because if I don't trust myself, then anything that comes in is not going to stick. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. And so the, the, you know, we talk about faith, like you mentioned faith, and we talk about faith, faith, faith. I keep saying faith, Nazel. <laughs> oh yeah, I you broke it. <laughs> cartoon with the cone? The dog, the person throwing the cone, <laughs> the dog says it's yes. for your own good. <laughs> yes, that's my favorite. Um, I totally lost my train of thought. Faith, about faith, faith okay. versus trust. To me, and this is just, this is a personal thing, but to me, I can't manifest faith until I have a sense of trust. Right? Because what if I don't trust myself to pick the right faith as an example. Right? That's a vicious cycle. <laughs> <laughs> it is, you know, it's like I who's right? I trust I'm doing as much as I can possibly do. And that's the, in my own world. Right. In my own because you know, two things I know. None of us get out of this alive and as far as I know nobody knows what's on the other side. So there's a lot of ideas and, and those are, you know, pro con, that kind of stuff. I trust that there's more than what we know. I trust that there is a power greater than ourselves. So I can create that space of trust for myself and that helps build faith. So that, that trust allow and feel gratitude, right? So that's the way I approach faith. And it doesn't have to be this specific book or this specific teacher. I, I like to glean from all of them so that I try to create a space where what feels good to my being, showing up. To me, you know, you look at the golden rule, I think there's a big reason why it's golden. It's because every, every book that I've ever read about religion talks about that, right? And so, <clears throat> if you live by that one rule, it creates, it creates a strong anchor point. Um, Questions on all of this? The, the other gratitude I, I think about from all this is, I don't know if you guys have gotten like the 20 something emails or dozens and dozens of emails from every corporation, company, restaurant. Mm -hmm. yes. And I, I look at those and go, what were you doing to keep your restaurant clean before? <laughs> <laughs> and it's like, Thank you. At least it's bringing to their attention to clean the place up. <laughs> well, I think right now is the best time to go to a restaurant because one, nobody's there and everything's really clean. Right. Um, and everybody's yeah. trying to get your business. I mean, there's well, that's I mean that's the thing is right you know with and 
the corporations and stuff will most of them will survive. The small businesses the small business. are going to hurt bad, um, and they may not survive. You know, just it's and that's tough. And so, small business plug. Um, the small businesses, though, they're supposed to, and, and I don't know what the interest rate on their loans are, but there's supposed to be loans available for small businesses right now, too. And I've heard that they're in the works on trying to get those done if somebody's like going under because of it. Interesting. Yeah, I mean, this, this could, so that. beyond the virus itself, you know, we start to get into worry about the future. What's it going to look like? What, so the, the economic impact of this is going to far outreach the viral impact of it mm -hmm. for a lot of reasons. I mean, Disney World is closed for Christ's sake. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Starting tomorrow, indefinitely. Um, it's. Um, well, there's a lot of there's products we can't get in either now. Yeah. Um, I know at the at the store that I work at, a lot of that comes like in toys. Uh, that's manufactured over in China, and we're not getting a lot of that right now. Right. So the shipments are slowing down. So I'm going to be, I'll post it in the bottom of the YouTube video that I'm putting for this, the, the link to um, the Harvard Medical School, and also I can send it to you guys via email. Um, I'll be, I'll be, Fane and I are crafting an email to send out to our entire community to just kind of address this and what we're going to do here and that kind of stuff. Uh, don't know yet. We should send it out tonight or tomorrow. Um, we've got to figure out what we're doing with our son in Atlanta right now, too. So that's kind of piled on. Uh, looks like the boys are coming home early for spring. So <laughs> I, I feel bad for Jaden because it's a senior year and there's all sorts of graduation stuff. And he's president of a group and a big group there that was trying to do big events, cancer support group, that kind of stuff that he's very passionate about. And uh, all of that is waning off, and that that's that's tough. It's like a, I mean, I, he'll he'll deal with it. I know that, but it's still it's hard to see you know that happen. Um, and he's certainly not the only one impacted, but he's the one that matters to me. Um, but <clears throat> this too shall pass. Does, does this help kind of bring the concept of these relationships into light a little bit more? Or did I just confuse matters for you? The silence scares me. <laughs> 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 it's helpful. It does. Okay. I mean, I don't need a pat on the back. I'm just trying to get clarity from the room. Uh, In a, so I have a relative who is ill, and um, I experienced kind of this thing in that situation, different from Corona, mm -hmm. but I began like realizing that I was, um, you know, trusting that it, however it was going to work out was going to work out, and contributing my wisdom that I had, and kind of feeling like I was doing appropriate things, kind of felt like I had established some, the right boundaries and that kind of thing. It was offering compassion and felt a real peace. And so when it was just all put together, I was like, oh, I've got this chart going. <laughs> I wasn't necessarily thinking about it that way. But it was just such a, like, everything was so good. And I just felt like when all of that is good, it's like, oh, but this is how, this is how good it can be. Yeah, thank you for that. That's important. I know. Um, and, and did you notice that your wisdom and your trust, because you've been there and done that, through that mm -hmm. kind of thing, did you notice it helped settle down? Give yeah. them a sense of tranquility. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So you're that that was creating a controlling cycle for them, yeah. and it doesn't have to be on the surface. It can be just by being there and being of support to them in whatever ways felt right. within your boundaries. Right. But you can observe how it impacts the people that you're with. And they appreciate it. Calm down. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And so that's it's incredible what you know just this simple perspective can do. So thank you for that. That helps. Um, other questions? All right. Thank you for your time and attention as always. <laughs>